All right. Let's start the call regs. Rule 10 traffic separation scheme. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the live today. The setup looks a little different. It has to be different because the theme of today's live is a little different. It's something which we have been all requesting for quite a bit of time. So henceforth, a little different setup. I appear to be a little smaller in the screen, which actually doesn't make much of a difference to the viewers who are going to continue watching the live and Coffee, yes, Nikhil, the coffee is on. Coffee is ready. Is bar life ke beach mein nahi banaunga, banaka ready hoke betho. Okay. So today, I think most of you already have an idea what is it going to be all about. Today we are going to talk about the much-awaited topic, traffic separation schemes, that is rule number ten of collision regulation, which falls under part B and it comes under section one. So with that introduction, let's start with the live today and I hope the pleasantries are exchanged. Uh, hello everyone and welcome to the live. Welcome and thanks a lot for sparing time of your routine on a Saturday evening. Nothing much to do around in Hong Kong after six because of the present COVID situations. Most of the shops, they shut down by six and after that, mostly the restaurants are open and you can take your takeaways if you want. So, yeah. <clears throat> so let's start with the rule 10, which is traffic separation schemes. Okay. Traffic separation scheme, guys, if you can see in the backdrop, it is nothing. It's to keep it very simple. It is just like what you do on the road. It's a way to separate the traffic, two streams of the traffic. You have a divider on the road, correct? If you're a layman, you have a divider on the road to separate the traffic, right? the two lanes of traffic, you have one, you know, lane of the traffic, which is moving in one particular direction, the other is coming out to separate them, you have a divider, you have a roundabout, so on and so forth. Sometimes you would see these white strip in the middle dotted strip and yellow on the outskirts. So likewise at sea to separate two different uh, uh, streams of traffic, we have something called traffic separation schemes. What is a traffic se se separation scheme? If you see visually on the chart, it appears like you can see these bold magenta lines and then you have a thin magenta line on the corner like you can see. But out at sea, if you s like look outside the window and if you see visually, you won't see these lines. You might see a boy or two just to mark the beginning or the end of a scheme, separation scheme. But visually, you won't see any magenta line. You only see this separation on your chart. And by keeping your vessel, like you can see these arrows, I, I hope you can see the arrows, one arrow is pointing in one direction, the other pointing down. So that's how the traffic is separate, separated. The inbound traffic is on the right hand side, the outbound traffic is on the left hand side. So that's how the traffic is separated and the bold magenta line which you can see is a traffic separation zone. The thicker line, the, 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 the broader line is a zone and the thinner line on the left hand side if you can see, maybe right on your screen. Uh, the left thinner line, which you can see here, is a traffic separation line. This is to mark the extreme boundaries. Zone is the broader line is usually in the center to clearly distinctively separate the traffic. You can say a traffic separation zone is like a no man's land. Nobody's going to enter it until unless there are a few exceptions when you can actually enter it. So that's how you end up separating. If everybody is allowed, if there is no zone in between, then there is no demarcation line to separate the traffic, to branch out, branch out the traffic. Okay, so the thick magenta line helps you separate. So basically you can understand in layman's term, a separation zone is a no man's land. Usme na idhar wala gusega na udhar wala gusega. Dono bhai, uh, uh, is, 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 uh, usme, usme dono. Agar aap loge koi question hai, to please thoda sa rok lo, because uh, I need to first explain you this rule and then uh, take your question. So I may not be able to answer you in case you have, you're putting up the questions now, but if something interesting, you can leave it in the question box uh, section and I'll be able to take up your questions from there. So like I was explaining you, zone, separation zone is basically a no man's land. Understood that now it's inbound and now it's outbound. Both will go either Okay. Now the key 
the most important aspect when we talk about traffic separation scheme is guys you have to remember that traffic separation scheme the rule is applicable in any condition of visibility so if you are given a situation where a surveyor tells you or a question is raised to you or if you are in a situation in real life if you happen to be in traffic separation scheme and if there is a restricted visibility remember rule number 10 is still applicable but how you are going to use that it's going to be different rule number 19 the rules of engagement of altering the course are different whereas in rules of engagement in case the vessel is are, are in line of sight are different but rule number 10 is still applicable in any condition of visibility because it comes in part b section one that means under any condition of visibility so remember whenever anybody is giving you a situation where he puts you in restricted visibility or in line of sight remember 10 is applicable with the only uh, uh, condition that either of the two condition either you will take action as per being in line of sight of each other or as per rule 19 being in res restricted visibility now let's see what the rule says and we'll quickly run through the rule because the rule is relatively simple it's not that difficult uh, but you need to get the meaning of the rule by reading each word carefully like i always reinstate in each and every life of mine when it comes to rules of the road do not gaze through the rules do not do ba 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 read each word and if there is any word which you do not understand or which doesn't make sense to you google it and make sure that every word explains you its meaning and you are able to comprehend that all right so now let's read tss part a most important part why we'll get to that this rule applies to traffic separation schemes this rule applies to traffic separation schemes adopted by the organization and does not relieve any vessel of her obligation under any other rule okay so that means if you are in the traffic separation zone it does not relieve the vessel of her obligation under any other rule okay so tss rule when you are in case you are trying to use any other rule in in conjunction with tss remember tss the rule whatever it says is still applicable it won't relieve you you cannot bypass rule 10 saying that oh i use basically she is trying to indicate specifically rule number 18 responsibilities okay because there are few things which are different in rule number 18 and uh, which are differently interpreted in rule number 10 especially with regards to vessel less than 20 meters fishing vessels and ram vessels so what it's trying to tell you is that rule 10 will take priority over these rules if you are trying to resolve a situation which is crossing or a head-on remember the requirements of rule 10 rule 10 supersedes them so you have to take action keeping both the rules together in mind okay and the word separation schemes adopted by the organization means traffic separation schemes which are adopted by imo all right how will you get to know if a traffic separation scheme is adopted by the imo or not or is it just some local tss created by a local port state or a local authority well first of all you can interrogate in your tss in your ECDIS if it is an imo approved or not otherwise you have a separate book routing schemes which presents each and every organization uh, each and every tss traffic separation schemes which has been accepted and adopted by imo okay that's how you will get to know if a traffic separation scheme is adopted by imo or not you will go back to routing guide so remember this rule is applicable to tss adopted by an organization okay primarily imo what happens in if in case it is not an am adopted organization well the rule can still be applied but can be overruled by a local regulation say like us might have different set of rules for for tss which they have just created for their internal waters okay now moving on so this is what part a means coming to part b Ooh, part b comment section is active people are moving in and out in and out so much many are on rule sunne ya nikal lein sun lo yaar koi nuksan nahi hoga na okay rule uh, rule 10 part b a vessel using a traffic separation scheme shell it says shell a vessel using that means any vessel the word is vessel it does not say power driven vessel it does not say fishing vessel any vessel a vessel using traffic separation scheme shell shell the word is not should the word is not will it says shell to thoda sa breather hai aap logo ke paas 
proceed in appropriate traffic lane in the general direction of traffic flow for that lane again it's a lawyer's language what does it mean basically it says just like on the road you are going to follow the direction of the traffic you are not going to come in the opposite direction halaki hamare yahan log aa jate hain but you know that's not allowed that's not permitted by the law so in case you are proceeding in a traffic separation zone now you can see these arrows one direction of arrow on this side is pointing up the arrows in this direction is pointing down so what it says is that not only you have to follow your appropriate lane that means agar aap niche ja rahe hain to aap is lane mein rahenge aap is lane mein nahi aa sakte aur agar aap if you are inbound say assume that this is inbound then you have to follow the general direction aur general direction mein aise nahi ki aap aise chal le ya aise chal le just because you are allowed to you are in your lane that doesn't mean you can head in any direction you have to still follow the general direction general direction means the direction of these arrows so just because i am in the right lane if i am going down if i am following this lane or if i am going up if i am following this lane that doesn't mean i can go about doing this or doing this or any kind of heading i want zigzag nothing no the rule says you have to follow appropriate lane that means you have to be in your traffic lane and you have to also follow the general direction general direction means the direction which is pointed by these arrows so your so your courses are such that it should align with these arrows which are going up and down okay so you cannot make uh, like you know courses which are cutting across again the reason is so that each ship is following other in a straight line rather than if you do not follow the general direction of traffic flow what is going to happen ships are going to start to cut across each other first kijiye ye aapka course hai you are upbound you are following the general traffic Uh, you are following your lane you are following the general direction and there is one more ship <laughs> please don't mind the spoon and he has laid his courses like this what is going to happen he is going to cut across then what if he changes the course and make make a further like a next course alteration like this so that's why but if both are following the general direction of traffic flow you see they are separated already and there there is no risk of there will be less risk of collision why because they both are following each other like in the same direction so most probably you will maintain the distances so always remember guys when you are plotting your courses i have seen many second mates to avoid course alterations what they will do is they will run a line from one end of the tss to other end in a way that it automatically joins the next alteration this is absolutely wrong if your traffic separation scheme the general direction is like this like you can see in the arrows the course has to follow these arrows and change as per these arrows most of these most of the time i see courses like this you know cut across like this bent which is not allowed why because you are going to cut across the entire set of traffic so this is my advice to any aspiring third mate who wants to be a second mate or existing second mates is do not lay courses like this you know which cut cut across from one end of the tss right to the other end absolutely wrong in contravention and in real life you will see you are cutting across the entire set of traffic stream absolutely wrong always follow the general direction because you can keep right you can keep stay in the center you can stay on the left depending how you think the traffic conditions might show up in your depth draft blah 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 but do not keep courses which cut cut across from one end and goes other end to save one way point you know basically the whole exercise why they do it is so that they can put one less way point aur wo ek way point kam rahe taki dusre wale way point mein seedhe match ho jaye please don't do this this is absolutely it's going to put you in bad situations now coming back to second part part b point number 2 so far as practicable keep clear of the traffic separation line or separation zone now we have already discussed these this thin line on the corner is a line it's it's called traffic separation line this marks the boundary the port and starboard boundary is marked by the by these traffic separation lines and the thick thick one which you see this one the it's called as traffic separation zone the thick magenta line is a traffic separation zone the thinner line is a traffic separation line what it says is we have already discussed that vessel should stay clear of it these are unmanned areas no man's land why because if everybody starts to enter these zones and lines how will the traffic be separated so by creating this uh, you know it's not a physical hurdle but by creating a pictorial hurdle you are trying to separate the traffic moving in opposite direction bhai jo left wala hai wo left row jo right wala right row but if they end up getting inside the zones to merge ho jayega traffic separation bacha kahan so the whole idea of separation scheme is gone so that's why they give you these zones and lines so that there are boundaries within which you can say bhai ye meri left bound boundary hai ye meri right bound right boundary hai aur beech mein mera separation is just like a divider on the road nobody bloody rides on the divider right and nobody rides on the left and right extreme boundaries with the yellow the the the, the yellow line which you see right you are 99% driving on the road which is free of any marking right so that's what it means that as far as practicable keep clear as far as practicable okay doesn't say you cannot 
and there are few exceptions when you can enter the line or the zone which we will talk about a little later but remember so far it's practicable keep clear and especially i've seen some second mates will point their course right like next to the zone so that again they can meet in the next waypoint no keep well clear because you never know in real life you might have to alter a little bit to port alter a little bit to starboard so leave some clearance from these lines especially if you are in down if you're, if you're southbound if you're in the southbound lane don't get very close to this end or that end. try and stick clear of them which allows you remember in case you have to alter the course it must give you a certain amount of leeway in an emergency of course you can alter you can cut across but why do you want to get into that situation and secondly if in case you get drifted and you're not sticking to the coastline absolutely then you might end up running in these lanes and zones and if a vts observes you doing that and if they realize that it's a willful negligence then in that case the vessel will be fined okay or and furthermore they might even report this issue to your company and also to your flag state so that means more paperwork and more explanation and of course the fine can also be imposed on the vessel it can be a personal fine as well so please stay clear of the lines and zones now part three normally join or leave a traffic lane at the termination of the lane okay but when joining or leaving from either side means join or leave karna hai lane ko to he kara hai ki aap uske end pe kare beech mein na kare matlab kahin se bhi mat ghusein basically he's again the whole part exercises to organize how the traffic goes in and how the traffic goes out okay but when joining or leaving from either side shall do so at as small an angle to the general direction of traffic flow as practicable what does it mean again the whole idea is to organize entry exit and stay within a traffic separation lane they are basically trying to make sure that if you enter like this you stay like this you don't end up doing all this we who we who that's what they're trying to avoid they say that if you are jo joining a lane if you are leaving a lane try and do that at the extremities like in this case if i'm joining the lane i should try and join from here rather than cutting across from anywhere imagine if i start to join on the lane from the right somebody's joining from the left it's going to create a chaos then it's not orderly so basically they're trying to establish order how the traffic looks appears and actually maneuvers within a given lane so when they say do it at the termination of the lane they are basically trying to say that because what happens if you try to leave the lane in the middle you will cut across the entire traffic now for, imagine if you are proceeding in the northbound lane and you want to leave the lane not at the termination but in the middle what will happen you will take an alteration enter into the zone and what does the rule says you should avoid or entering a zone and you will cut across the entire southbound traffic and then move so what is happening the whole purpose of separation scheme is gone because the scheme is trying to separate traffic in an area where the traffic density is high so if, if they allow anyone to enter from anywhere then the whole idea is gone now imagine if you are in a southbound lane and start to alter and pass ahead of the traffic which is northbound again the whole so that's why they say that do it at the termination of the lane okay do not do it in the so far as possible but if you have a port which is within that area then of course you are allowed to do so we'll come back to it later and when leaving or entering they should do it at small angles why again what we discussed just a couple of minutes before like you like i told you follow the general direction means if the arrow is like this my courses should be like this they should not be you know cutting across the general direction because your traffic pe chara ga wo to lane follow karoge and if your courses are like this then again you are creating situations which are not required plus you are confusing the other traffic the southbound traffic is going to look at you like this so they might think that you are trying to cross or do something the southbound traffic will think kar yaar ye kya kar raha hai is he trying to cut across is he trying to make an alteration what so that's why they specifically tell you to follow a general direction so that everybody is clear of your intention and they know that you are heading and you are going to continue following the lane okay and uh, and why the small angle that again the small angle is so that you don't cut across other ships okay and you do not confuse the ships in the other land that you might that you are trying to cross the traffic separation schemes that's why they say small angle small angle means you are not confusing anyone with your heading that is he trying to cross the traffic separation scheme is he going to maintain his course is he going to cut across no so when a trap when a gradual change in the course is the others will not be like like this and you are out so small changes in course you know you should do it gradually it should not be a you know a course which is cut across like this or like you know koi given angle ya degree nahi hai but they say so far as possible shall do it at small angle so if you are coming from south bound agar aap niche se aa rahe hain farz kijiye aap is line ke yahan se join kar rahe hain main yahan se join kar raha hu side se main kisi port se aa raha hu aur yahan se aa raha hu so i should not join the course like this and then enter the i should join at a small angle this is again trying to separate the traffic or regulate the traffic within the same lane imagine kijiye main yahan se aa raha hu port se apna 
ट्रैफिक सेपरेशन लाइन को क्रॉस करके एंड इफ माई कोर्सेज आर लाइक दिस इफ माई कोर्स इज लेड आउट लाइक दिस एंड देन पुट्स मी लाइक यू नो देन आई ऑल्टर एंड स्टार्ट टू प्रोसीड द लेन वट हैव आई डन आई कट अक्रॉस आई हैव कन्फ्यूज एवरी वन द ट्रैफिक विच इज नॉट बाउंड इज ऑल्सो कन्फ्यूज दैट इज इवन टू क्रॉस इज इवन टू कंटिन्यू क्रॉसिंग गो स्ट्रेट नो बडी नोज बट इफ यू कम एट अ शेलो एंगल एट अ वेरी नैरो एंगल एवरी बडी नोज द पिक्चर इज मोर क्लियर एंड दे नो दैट यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू डू समथिंग सिली लुक्स लाइक मोस्ट प्रॉब्ली देन नॉट यू आर गोइंग टू कट अक्रॉस दिस लाइन एंड जॉइन द ट्रैक सो योर कोर्सेज शुड बी बट योर कोर्सेज शुड नॉट बी सर दैट यू शुड कंटिन्यू मनोवरिंग इन द लेन इट शुड बी लाइक जेंटली कटिंग अक्रॉस एंड देन फाइनली जॉइनिंग द लेन एंड इफ यू आर कमिंग फ्रॉम इफ यू आर कमिंग टू जॉइन द नॉर्थ बाउंड लेन देन अगेन use shallow angles narrow angles you know come join and then make the course straight and there you go but what you should not do is like a course line which come across cuts like this and then goes joining the uh, general direction of traffic scheme so this is what the uh, the rule is trying to explain you again the whole idea is to establish order have less chaos and a traffic which is you know looks very organized looks very orderly that's the whole idea moving on अगर अभी तक आपका किसी का कोई क्वेश्चन है पर्टेनिंग टू व्हाट वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड फील फ्री तब तक एक या दो चुस्की मार दूंगा सो नाउ कमिंग टू पार्ट सी ऑफ द रूल सो फॉर नो क्वेश्चन आई बिलीव आई थिंक एवरीबडी इज क्लियर एंड एवरीबडी इज विद मी एवरी इफ 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 यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन सो फार पर्टेनिंग टू वॉट वी हैव डिस्कस्ड फील फ्री इफ नॉट देन आई कंटिन्यू टू move ahead with the live now part c says a vessel shall a vessel shall it is again not should it's not will it says a vessel shall so far as practicable avoid crossing traffic separation lanes we have already discussed this should avoid crossing traf- traffic separation lanes lanes kaun sa hai patle wala jo magenta line aapko dikh raha hai but if obliged to do so shall cross is there any question sorry yeah if obliged traffic separation a vessel, a vessel so far so far as uh, practicable avoid crossing traffic separation lanes but if obliged to do so shall do shall, shall cross on a heading as nearly as practicable at right angles to the general direction of traffic flow now the key words here is avoid crossing traffic separation lane now there is one lane over here on my right hand side which is northbound now one lane is over here which is southbound it says that you should avoid crossing it says avoid it does not say should not it, it says you cannot it says avoid crossing why it avoid crossing because again crossing means you will be cutting across everyone and you know in the crossing situation also they say that avoid crossing ahead of the traffic try and so basically they are trying to mitigate the risk they are trying to reduce the risk where a risk of collision can take place or a or a situation can take place where you end up colliding with someone so they say that if it is not if it is if it is possible for you if you can manage then avoid crossing but if you are obliged to do so means what if you are coming from this side of the port say like there is a port abc and you want to go to port z which is on the other side you have to cut across you have to cut across so there is no way but so that's what it means so if at all you are obliged means agar aapko karna hi hai then how do they want you to do you should do in a way not by keeping the ship 90 degrees the it it does not say 90 degrees it says the heading the heading of the ship not the course remember guys now when you are plotting a uh, a course to cross a traffic separation scheme the course has to be 90 degrees heading has to be 90 degrees okay so the course with the course line which you are going to lay should be 90 degrees and that heading should be maintained on the course your course made good can be anything so basically why so i'll explain you why and it should be 90 degree to the general direction of traffic flow now you can see this is the general direction of the traffic flow north flow agar aap dekhe niche ka agar arrow hai i should lay my course in a way that it should be 90 degree to this direction the general direction of traffic flow to so, jab aap course marenge when you are trying to cut across you should be 90 degrees to this general direction of traffic flow to so, agar aap idhar se mare to aap is arrow ke jo arrow niche ja raha hai इसके 90 डिग्री पर रहेंगे ओके नॉट टू द 90 डिग्री ऑफ द ले नॉट टू द 90 डिग्री नॉट 090 नाइन जीरो कोर्स कई लोग सोचेंगे कि नहीं मुझको 090 हेडिंग मेंटेन रखनी है नो इट डज नॉट से यू हैव टू मेंटेन 090 इट सेज यू हैव टू बी राइट एंगल टू द जनरल डायरेक्शन ऑफ द ट्रैफिक फ्लो सो वट एवर इज द जनरल अगर जनरल डायरेक्शन ऐसा है सो आई विल मेक नाइन्टी डिग्री सो परपेंडिकुलर बनाना है आपको जैसे हमने नाइन्थ और टेंथ के एग्जाम्स में करा था सो वट एवर इज द जनरल डायरेक्शन योर कोर्स शुड भी नाइन्टी डिग्री टू दैट एंड बेसिकली कोर्स means heading in this in 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 this case your course made good can be anything so remember guys when you trying to cut across don't keep your course uh, 
course made good or don't worry about your course made good course of, you have to maintain heading and why because if you maintain 90 degrees to the general direction of traffic flow the distance covered by you to cross this scheme is going to be bare minimum if you cut across this scheme like this the distance is more if i cut across this traffic separation scheme like this you can clearly see there is more distance the minimum distance from this point to this point is a direct line if i cut across this traffic schemes in a 90 degree so that's why it emphasizes that if at all you have to cross then cross by keeping your heading to 90 degrees to the general direction of traffic flow so you should be perpendicular to the direction of this these arrows okay not by keeping heading 90 degrees because if you keep 90 degrees then here is 90 degrees so in a way you are taking much more distance so that you cut across the TSS in bare minimum of time and what do you have to do for that? distance minimum so you can see the minimum distance between this point and this point is a straight line so that's why they say 90 degrees in general direction of traffic flow so you will cross the traffic separation scheme in bare minimum time with least distance that's what it means further moving on coming to point D so I hope it made sense to you and I hope I'm keeping things clear. So again, reminding yourself the heading has to be 90 degree to the general direction of traffic flow. Here general direction is this arrow. So 90 degree to this. Here general direction is 90 degree. So perpendicular. Just bring your course 090. You do not have to keep the heading 90 degrees. It can be anything. You have to be perpendicular. Okay. So if it is 180, then in that case, 090 is going to be 090 in this side and 270 on this side but what if it is not exactly 180 so you have to be perpendicular to the general direction of traffic flow and that's it you will end up crossing the TSS in compliance with the rule and remember when you are actually crossing the traffic separation scheme your heading should be 090 not your course made good a lot many ships has been fined in the English channel for this doing the same thing why because it increases the distance which you will require to safely cross the traffic separation scheme all right now coming to D we are almost through. Now D is a very important point and a lot many oral questions are set from part D. What does part D says? A vessel shall not use a insure, an insure traffic zone. I'll explain you what is an insure traffic zone. Any, any area which lies on the other side of this traffic separation lane. Can you see this line? The thin line, magenta line. This area which is on the other side of the line is insure area. Insure area means you can have ports, you can have certain anchorages on the other side. Basically, it's just like a road. Road ke side mein pavement ho sakta hai, paan ki ho sakti hai. There can be some small shops. So, inshore traffic area is a is, is an area which is beyond your road. Aapne dekha hoga when you drive your car, out on the outer periphery, once the lines are beyond the solid yellow lines, you can have a platform, you can have a walkway. So, likewise, area which is beyond these this thin line, magenta line, which is a traffic separation line, is called an insure traffic area. On this side, you can have ports, you can have anchorages, so on and so forth. So this, this area, which is which is on the other side of this traffic, on this thin line, the traffic separation line, as they call it, the thin magenta line, is called as insure traffic zone. So a vessel should not use insure traffic zone when she can safely use appropriate traffic lane within the adjacent traffic separation scheme. Now, what does this mean? Looks very confusing. Nothing. If in case you can use a traffic separation lane, if I'm going southbound, either I can be using this lane or I can be using this area. If I go on the other side, what stops me? The rule stops me. It says that if you if you are if you do not have any business, then do not come to a traffic separation zone. Why? Again, because in traffic separation, the traffic separation lanes are governed by rule 10, whereas an insure traffic zone is not. Means in you, if you are using this insure traffic zone, people can be doing any heading, any course. They can be coming inside a port. Somebody can be coming outside. Somebody can be dropping the anger. So again, they are trying to, what they are trying to do is that if you do not have a business in this area, then don't go in this area and create a kiosk. Use something which is of, which you need to use. So if you are driving your car and if you have no business to drive your car on the pavement, then you are not supposed to be on the pavement. Right? Because the payment is made for the pedestrian. Likewise, that's what the rule is trying to say that if you if you are trying to, if, if you have got no business in the traffic separation zone, then do not use it. Okay. You what you are supposed to use is you are supposed to use adjacent traffic sep you need to use appropriate lane means if you are southbound, then this is your appropriate lane. If you are northbound, then this is your appropriate lane. So appropriate lane adjacent to the traffic separation scheme. So what is adjacent to this area? If I see on the left. 
if this is an insure zone what is the appropriate traffic lane and adjacent traffic scheme the one which is southbound so that's what it means ki bhai aap idhar nahi pata chala aap aaye upar se southbound hain aur yahan se insure traffic zone se hote ho ghumte ghumate ho nikal gaye ho it says if you have got no business then stick to your appropriate lane in the adjacent traffic separation scheme now further moving on however vessel of less than 20 meters in length sailing vessel and vessel engaged in fishing may use insure traffic zone so these three vessels are allowed so if you are a sailing vessel if you are a vessel less than 20 meters in length and if you are a fishing vessel even though you have got you may not be proceeding to a port uh, within this area you are still allowed to use this area now there can be various reasons sailing vessels usually can be because of recreation fishing vessel might be fishing because there are fishing or shoal of fishes in that area or less than 20 meters is too small of a size so hence for these three vessels are exempted okay so if you are less than 20 meters so if i am given a situation that you are a vessel fishing vessel can i be on this side of the lane in the insure traffic zone yes i am allowed to do that if i am a sailing vessel can i be on this side can i be using an insure traffic zone yes i am allowed to do so so only three type of vessels are allowed to use traffic separation uh, your 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 insure traffic zone without any restriction they are 20 meters vessel less than 20 meters sailing vessel and vessel engaged in fishing remember vessel less than 20 meters so it can be any vessel less than 20 meters in length all right what does part 2 says not not withstanding sub paragraph d1 means jo upar likha hua hai not in compliance with that no, means not according to that a vessel may use an insured traffic zone matlab koi bhi use kar sakta hai par condition kya hai Not withstanding मतलब जो ऊपर लिखा है उसके अलावा भी लोग यूज कर सकते हैं बट किस कंडीशन में यूज कर सकते हैं कैन यूज अ इंश्योर ट्रैफिक जोन वेन एन रूट टू और फ्रॉम अ पोर्ट ऑफ शोर इंस्टॉलेशन और स्ट्रक्चर पायलट स्टेशन और एनी अदर सिचुएटेड विद इन द इंश्योर ट्रैफिक जोन और टू अवॉइड इमीडिएट डेंजर वेरी वेरी सिंपल बेसिकली वॉट द रूल इज ट्राइंग टू टेल यू दैट डू नॉट यूज इफ यू हैव गॉट नो बिजनेस टू यूज but you can have business to use uh, an area what if my port is within this area what if my pilot station is within this area what if i am an offshore vessel trying to move towards a rig which is in this area what if uh, uh, i need to pick up a pilot or what if there is certain what if i have to pick up a store and there is a designated anchorage what if i have to bunker if there is a designated bunkering in this area in that case i can use traffic separation uh, insure traffic zone irrespective of my size and nature of my vessel concern or in case of an emergency तो अगर इमरजेंसी है मान लीजिए मेरे पास सी रूम नहीं है यहां से कोई क्रॉस कर रहा है गॉट नो अदर ऑप्शन आई एम साउथ बाउंड देर इज वन वेसल ट्राइंग टू क्रॉस आई गॉट नो अदर ऑप्शन बट टू ऑल्टो कोस्ट टू स्टार बोर्ड एंड देन इन दैट केस इन एन इमरजेंसी यू कैन एंटर दिस ट्रैफिक सेपरेशन दिस इंश्योर ट्रैफिक जोन और इफ इन केस यू आर बाउंड टू सर्टेन कमिटमेंट which can be picking up a pilot in this area or pick or going to a port within this area or there is some insure installation or designated anchorage or receiving bunkers then aap ja sakte hain अदरवाइज नहीं जा सकते मतलब आप इस कब नहीं जा सकते बेसिकली तब नहीं जा सकते अगर आप ऊपर से नीचे जा रहे हैं साउथ बाउंड है यू आर यू हैव गॉट नो बिजनेस इन दिस एरिया यू आर नॉट लेस देन ट्वेंटी मीटर्स यू आर नॉट अ सेलिंग वैसे यू आर नॉट अ फिशिंग वैसे यू आर जस्ट साउथ बाउंड गोइंग टू सम अदर पोर्ट देन इन दैट केस यू कैन नॉट गो अबाउट लॉटरिंग इन दिस एरिया अगेन द होल आइडिया इज द ट्रैफिक विच डज नॉट बिलोंग इन एंड आउट फ्रॉम द पोर्ट शुड नॉट बी इन दैट एरिया इन अटिक एनवायरमेंट दे शुड बी कीप सेंड दे शुड बी केप्ट ऑर्गेनाइज बाई कीपिंग दैम इन अ लेन ओके सो दिस इज वॉट इट मीन्स so if a surveyor asks you that in case of an emergency can you use the insure traffic zone yes you may yes you may okay so what can be that emergency engine failure your rudder is stuck fire on board any kind of an, uh, an emergency what if you an nuc can an nuc use insure traffic zone yes of course he can if there is an emergency on board your ship engine failure or perhaps like you know both your radars are gone and your egdes is shut down or there is a blackout on the ship that's an emergency so you can use insure traffic zone in that case otherwise in case you are bound within that area for something which is there within that area then again you can use if not then the only vessels which is, which are exempted are less than 20 meters in length sailing vessel and fishing vessel okay coming to part e now this is very very good part e d and e remember guys isme se maximum question bante hain aapke orals ke okay coming to part e a vessel other than a crossing vessel or a vessel joining or leaving a lane remember guys a vessel other than means any vessel now it does not say a power driven vessel crossing it does not say a nuc crossing it does not say cbd crossing it does not say fishing fishing vessel crossing crossing it says a vessel other than a crossing vessel or a vessel joining or leaving a lane so means if you are crossing crossing or if you are joining or leaving the lane leaving the lane or joining the lane in tino ke alawa 
shall not enter a separation zone. Now, what is a zone? This, the broad, thick, broad magenta line, the one which is separating the two streams of traffic is the zone. So other than a vessel which is trying to cross or which is trying to join, imagine Kiriye, you are, you have a port, you are, you are supposed to go northbound, there is a port and you are coming from this area. So you have to cut across the zone. So a vessel which is crossing or joining or leaving the lane. So in this case, you will be crossing, then again, you will be joining the lane. So you are allowed to do. What if you are southbound? If, what if you are southbound and you have a port on, on your, on your, on your uh, port side? In that case, you have to eventually cut across the zone. You, this is okay. So if you go about cutting this in, uh, in these circumstances, you know, crossing the uh, separation zone, crossing the traffic separation scheme, it's allowed. It's okay because you have a port. You have to go there. So a vessel other than a crossing vessel. So a crossing vessel can be just because he's coming from this port and going to port. port. So so if this this is port A. There is port B. If you're trying to go to port B, you might you 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 are allowed to cross the traffic separation scheme. Or in case you are joining or leaving a lane, joining and leaving the lane means in case I'm trying to go to a port which is on 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 further up north and I'm coming from this port. So I will come across cross the TSS at 90 degrees to the traffic separation scheme and then join the lane at narrow angle and then continue to use the appropriate traffic lane. So in this case, again, I'm allowed. So a, a vessel other than a crossing vessel or the one which is trying to join or leave the lane, okay, shall not be using the traffic separation zone. Means this is zone because it's a big area ho sakta, depending how wide the zone is. So that doesn't mean you anchor put anchor here or wait for you. Maybe you have pilot delay. You're not supposed to wait here. You're not supposed to stop here. Except, kuch logo ko allowed hai. Kis kis logo ko allowed hai? Traffic separation zone mein maze marna, crossing or joining or leaving a lane. Any vessel can do it. But there are a few exemptions. What are the exemptions? In case of an emergency to avoid immediate danger. Again, just like we told you that inshore traffic zone is allowed to be used in an emergency. Likewise, separation zone is also allowed to be used in an emergency. Again, it can be your engine failure. It can be a blackout. It can be failure of a critical equipment, both your gyros are gone and you have, your radar has shut down. And emergency, you know, where you declare an emergency. In that case, you can use zone. So if I say that I'm a vessel which is an NUC, can I go and anchor in a in, in, in traffic separation zone? Yes, I can. Because I'm running through an emergency, I might end up using. So traffic separation zone, you can't use it until unless you're not crossing or joining or leaving a lane. Or in case of an emergency to avoid immediate danger. Other emergency can be you're proceeding in the northbound lane. Yahan se koi bhai aa gaya hai, cross karne, idhar se. Hai. If somebody is crossing you from the starboard side, remember rule number 10 is applicable. And also rule number 15 is applicable. That is crossing. Okay. Ab yahan aap give way hai. Aur maan lije aapki taraf alter karne lag jai. It's an emergency. You have got no other choice. Even if you reduce the speed, you see that the, the CP is not increasing. Emergency hai. Toh aap us emergency mein aap port alteration le sakte hai. Or zone mein shayad gus sakte hai bachane ke liye. And this gets, all, this gets all the way more critical. If, it, if you are doing this, if you are not bound and there is a vessel on the port side, you are supposed to maintain your course and speed. Remember, she should avoid crossing a traffic separation scheme. So this is a situation where rule number 10 will be used in conjunction with rule number 15. Now she is you, she is on your port side. Is judge ke port side mein. Ideally, you are supposed to maintain your course and speed. She is a giveaway vessel. Both of them are power driven vessel. But you are in a TSS. The rule says that you should not be crossing. The rule says shall avoid crossing. But if she is allowed to do so because she is bound for some other port, she is well within her rights to cross the traffic separation scheme. So in that case, this this situation will be further resolved by rule number 15, which says that she is a stand on if both are power driven vessel and she is a giveaway. And what if she doesn't want to alter course or, you know, alters towards you or any situation there is an emergency plus you have got one vessel coming from the starboard side so in those circumstances you might end up reducing speed and might end up getting drifted in the separation zone so in these kind of circumstances emergency circumstances you can use the traffic separation zone or in case you are engaged in fishing so remember guys if you see a fishing vessel which is within the traffic zone he is allowed to do that if you are a fishing vessel and you are within the traffic separation zone, you can do whatever you want to do. Because traffic separation zone mein koi heading nahi hai. If you see the heading, the general direction of traffic is, is established for the lanes, not for the zone. Zone is a no man's land with no direction of traffic flow because it is supposed to separate the traffic flow. So when you are southbound, you are going to maintain this. When you are northbound, you are going to maintain this heading. But if you are in the zone, 
as a fishing vessel you can go like this you can go like this you can do like this you can make, but being within the zone so if you are a fishing vessel you are permitted to use the traffic separation zone to fish and remember fishing vessel is also allowed to use the inshore traffic zone so if a trip if, if, if somebody shows you a fishing vessel or if you see a fishing vessel within a zone and doing all kind of funny maneuvers he is well within his rights to do that but if he comes out of the traffic separation zone and he moves into a traffic separation lane in that case let it be a fishing vessel or a sailing vessel she is supposed to follow the general direction of traffic flow that doesn't mean because wo traffic separation zone mein ulta seedha left right ja raha tha to yahan par bhi aake ulta chalna lagega northbound lane mein no that is not allowed a fishing vessel is allowed to use a traffic separation zone so far as it stays within the zone and do all these kind of funny maneuvers within the zone if he comes out of the zone in either of the two lane northbound or southbound she has to be again complying with whatever we have already discussed follow the general direction of traffic flow should join at a narrow angle shall avoid crossing uh, cutting across the traffic so on and so forth so now part f says a vessel navigating in areas near the termination of traffic separation scheme shall not do so shall do so with particular caution now what it says is again agar aap if you are driving your car and you know that there is a right turn or a left turn the, there is a t section you always slow down your car right and you will not usually allow people to park right in front of your gate or right in front of the t point why because if you have got no business to be in and around of a traffic separation scheme the, the whole idea again is to separate the traffic and remove any traffic which is not required because remember guys tss maha established kari jati hai where there is a lot of kiosk there is a lot of traffic density so by what it tries it is again discouraging people not to be present in the area where they are not supposed to so if in case you are not you have got no particular intention to pass through that area then don't try and be in close vicinity of the traffic separation lane why again because they are trying to diverse diverse the traffic separate the traffic as far as possible so a vessel navigating in areas near the termination of the traffic zone traffic separation scheme shall do so with particular caution why again because people can be moving in people can be moving out so idea is to warn you that bhai agar aap navigate kar rahe hain in and around a tss scheme then do so remember that people will be inbound people will be outbound be careful and if possible avoid this area a vessel not using a traffic uh, separation scheme shall avoid it as a wide margin as is practicable again agar mera business hi nahi if i have got no business if i am not southbound if i am not northbound i have got some port right on top on this why do i want to go in and around this area and create a confusion again so in case you have got no intention to use the tss then don't stick close to the tss make sure you are staying well clear that's what it means now again i is very important now i listen to it very carefully a vessel engaged in fishing shall not impede the passage of any vessel following a traffic separation lane the word is passage a vessel engaged in fishing means in case you are fishing if you are in a traffic separation zone you are you can do whatever you want to do but if you are a vessel engaged in fishing shall not impede the passage of any vessel following a lane so like what i told you just now that fishing vessel if she is in a tra- inshore traffic zone or if she is in a traffic sep- if she is in a inshore traffic zone or if she is in a uh, traffic separation zone she can do whatever she wants to do but the moment she comes into the lane southbound or northbound any of the two lane well she cannot impede the passage means passage means kisi bhi jahaz ka passage impede nahi kar sakta so remember here rule 10 takes precedence over rule 18 where if you are a power driven vessel you are going to vacate you are going to keep clear of a fishing vessel as per rule number 18 but remember rule number 10 will supersede rule number 18 why because remember the first line what we read it says this rule applies to traffic separation schemes adopted by the organization and does not relieve any vessel of her obligation under any other rule okay so remember rule and rule number 18 ka pehla bhi pehla part bhi ye bolta hai except where rule 9 10 13 propose else otherwise so here specifically for fishing so if you see a fishing vessel who is not keeping clear of you in a traffic separation lane you have a right of way you can give him five short and rapid on your whistle as well as on your light that's what it means so a fishing vessel cannot impede the passage of any vessel means koi bhi passage whether it is a safe passage or not a safe passage of any vessel any vessel means it can be a fishing vessel it can or it can be a sailing vessel it can be a a, a power driven vessel it can be a restricted in ability to maneuver it can be a cbd the fishing vessel is supposed to stay clear of every vessel if she is following that particular lane and she has to follow the general direction of traffic 
lane. But if she is in the traffic separation zone, this thick magenta line, or if she is in the insure traffic zone, well, then in that case, she is not obliged to keep clear of you. Remember that only when she is in the lane means these two lanes, these areas. यहाँ उसको आपसे पंगे नहीं लेने तो फिशिंग वैसे बेसिकली किसी से पंगा नहीं ले सकता when she is in the lanes. She has to stay clear of everyone, whether she is engaged in fishing or not. It does not. I hope I am audible now. Am I audible now, guys? You need to tell me. I think now I should be audible. I hope now I am audible. If I am audible, just confirm me. Uh, am I audible now? If I am audible, just guys, give me a thumbs up. Okay, now I'm audible. Now, coming to part J, a vessel of less than twenty meters in length or a sailing vessel shall not impede the safe passage of a power-driven vessel following a traffic separation lane. Now, why is it different? Why this line is not included with the fishing vessel? They could have written fishing vessel less than twenty meters, and a sailing vessel shall not impede. Why? Because the terms are very different. A fishing vessel is going to stay clear, will not impede the passage of any vessel in a lane. Okay, so the word is passage, the word is vessel, and the word is lane. Okay, so fishing vessel is not going to impede any vessel within a separation lane. Okay, within a traffic lane. But over here, there are few conditions. First condition is vessel has to be less than twenty meters or a sailing vessel. So less than twenty meters and sailing vessel shall not impede the passage of what kind of vessel? Only power driven vessel. Okay. Usually, if you go to rule number eighteen, you will see a power-driven vessel is supposed to keep clear of the sailing vessel, but in this case, not. Rule number ten will supersede, provided, provided it is the safe passage of your vessel. So there are two conditions. If a vessel less than twenty meters or a sailing vessel is impeding the passage of a say like uh, other fishing vessel or a sailing vessel, they can do that. In that, other rules will be involved, but. they cannot impede the safe passage of a power driven vessel so you need to make sure that first of all you are a power driven vessel and then second is it has to be your safe passage in case of fishing vessel just a point before that the word was passage not safe passage now what is the difference very simple example a deep water route first is a aap ek vloc hai you are using a deep water route you are a 15 meter loaded vloc using a deep water route in singapore strait so your deep water route because of your draft becomes your safe passage you cannot go outside that deep water route so that becomes your safe passage so in that case if if that is your safe passage and you are a power driven vessel in that case a vessel less than 20 meters or a sailing vessel cannot impede your passage shall not impede your passage rather okay 
in case they do you have a right to give them five shot and rapid but if you are a normal power driven vessel just following a lane and in that case if a vessel less than 20 meters impedes your passage or ends up impeding your, impeding your passage or if a sailing vessel impedes your passage in that case you do not have the right of way so remember you have to first establish that am i a power driven vessel yes second is is this my safe passage yes only in that case you have a right of way over less than 20 meters or vessel which is a sailing vessel but if you are a power driven vessel using an appropriate lane and if you see a fishing vessel engaging uh, impeding your passage you will continue to have right of way there is no limitation okay but if you are a power driven vessel yes is this my safe passage yes and if then i'm asking you a vessel less than 20 meters is impeding your passage or a fishing or a sailing vessel is impeding your passage then you have a right of way and regardless if you are a power driven vessel and if you see a fishing vessel impeding your passage in your traffic lane you have a right to ask for a way by giving five short and rapid but if you meet a fishing traffic in a traffic separation zone which is this thick magenta line or if you meet them just after crossing in a traffic separation in, in an inshore area then you do not have a right of way remember guys this is where people get confused you only have a right of way over fishing vessel when you are when you meet or engage with fishing vessel in the lanes is your two lane dikh rahi hai only in this area you have the luxury of rule number 10 and likewise whenever we talk about we say vessel less than 20 meters or sailing vessel immediately aapke kaan khade ho jane chahiye okay less than 20 meter hai ya sailing vessel hai then immediately you should listen and you are a power driven vessel okay power driven vessel check and this is your safe passage check okay sir i have a right of way first i will give five short and rapid but if you see any of the condition missing if they give you that uh, a sailing vessel is trying to impede the passage and if it's not a power driven vessel case close if it is a power driven vessel then it comes to point 2 is it my safe passage but if they tell you it is not your it, if it is not a power driven vessel case close and remember constraint by draft is also a power driven vessel by the definition it says a vessel a power driven vessel so remember a sail a sailing vessel cannot be a constraint by draft a fishing vessel cannot be constraint by draft only a power driven vessel can be constraint by draft why because the definition is such that a power driven vessel which because of the nature of a draft so remember a cbd end of the day by dna is still a power driven vessel so only a power driven vessel can qualify to become a constraint by draft you cannot say what if a ram is a cbd no ram vessel is a ram vessel nuc is nuc sailing is sailing only a power driven vessel can acquire the status of a cbd kai baar hi log aate hain yaar what if a fishing uh, vessel is a cbd constraint but no it cannot be the definition says it has to be a power driven vessel first okay so if if i tell you that you are a constraint by draft then automatically it is understood that you are maneuvering in your safe passage whatever passage you are following is your safe passage to us case me to understood ho gaya but if i tell you that you are a power driven vessel and a fishing uh, and a sorry and a sailing traffic or a vessel less than 20 meters is impeding your passage then you must ask that is it my safe passage okay but if they tell you that you are a constraint by draft then it is understood that whatever passage you are following is your safe passage and if they end up impeding you will give them first five shot and rapid on your whistle com- combined by light signal if they still don't clear well obviously the re- the most obvious uh solution is going to be reducing the speed in combination of course depending how broad is your deep water route how much sea room is available but 99% reducing the speed is a better option in case you are a constraint by draft because left and right you may not have room to maneuver now coming to the final two points a vessel restricted in her ability to maneuver when engaged in an operation for the maintenance so if you are a ram vessel and if you happen to also be do engage also happen to be engaged in these kind of maintenance then let's see what the rule gives you extra a vessel restricted in her ability to maneuver when engaged in a in an operation for the maintenance of safety of navigation in a traffic separation scheme is exempted from complying with the rules of the from this rule to the extent necessary to carry out the operation now what does it mean that if i am a ram vessel that does not mean any ram vessel or a, a, a diving vessel or you know doing their own thing no if i am a ram vessel and i am engaged in the safety of navigation safety of navigation an example can be what if you are trying to repair uh, one boy a boy you know which is not functional or which is adrift you know or you are trying to establish new boys in the traffic separation uh, you know zones marking us putting a special boy within the uh, zone area or anything you know which is related to the safety what if there is a boy which has come adrift in your lane and you are trying to pull that boy away 
in that case if you are a ram vessel you are exempted from the rules means if you see a ram vessel which is engaged within for the safety of navigation then it is not it can if it wants he can he he he, he can present non compliance with this rule that means that agar aapko ek ram vessel dikh raha hai and if it starts to come in the opposite direction of this north bound rule but if it is doing it because she is engaged in the safety of navigation and doing something which is pertaining to safety of navigation she is allowed to do that this is a most common question that there is a ram vessel which is engaged in the safety of navigation perhaps repairing a navigational mark or something and you see him heading in the wrong direction or perhaps you doing she can do whatever she wants to do like you know she should avoid doing it but if she is obliged to do it to carry out the maintenance work or to carry out the work whatever is related to the maintenance of for the safety of navigation she can do that so she might not end up crossing at a 90 degree what are her benefits she may not cross at 90 degree she may not join at a narrow angle she may not leave at a narrow angle she may not even be bound for these ports and yet she ends up crossing so all these kind of luxuries will be available to you if you are a ram vessel engaged in any work typically for the safety of navigation that's what it means so if you see a ram a question is given to you that you are seeing a ram engaged in the safety of navigation coming in the opposite lane do you have a right of way definitely not she will have a right of way because she is exempted by these by by this rule rule number 10 coming to part i a vessel restricted in her ability to maneuver when engaged in in an operation for laying servicing or picking up of submarine cables within a traffic separation scheme is exempted from complying with this rule now again so there are two kind of ram vessels which are exempted from rule 10 the one which is engaged in the safety of navigation and the one which is again laying servicing or picking up of submarine cable why this is ex- exempted again when you are laying the submarine cables it may not be possible for you to always maintain your heading in the general direction because if there is a pipeline which has to be laid in a certain way in a certain direction of course easy you are laying this pipeline which has to go and then turn around like this and go into this port how can you follow the general direction of the traffic you are going to follow the pattern of the how the line has to be laid correct if there is a certain sur- sur- submarine cable which has to be laid for your internet or anything it has to follow the planning how the wire has to be laid the the cable has to be laid it cannot follow the general because it is not uh, there to transit the area it is there to do a certain category of job which has which is very very specific which has been designed and engineered in a certain way so again two kind of ram vessels are allowed exempted to keep it short the one which is laying servicing or picking basically the one which is handling submarine cables and the other ones which are employed for the maintenance of safety of navigation these two ram vessels are exempted to comply not to comply with these rules only to the extent which is necessary to carry out the operation so just because you are a ram vessel engaged in the safety of navigation that doesn't mean aap jo marzi kar lenge you are allowed exemptions only which is required to carry out that specific job okay that does not give you unlimited warranty of doing whatever nonsense you want to do you might be allowed to come in the opposite direction in case it is you have to do it to carry out certain repairs on a navigational mark but that doesn't mean you can then go about crossing and doing all your business so only to the extent to carry out that operation so with that rule number 10 comes to an end and i can take a breather finally ek rule kharam ho gaya so so far i think we have covered rule number 6 uh, we have covered rule number 9 we have covered rule number 10 we have covered rule number 13 we have covered rule number 14 we have covered rule number 15 and we have covered rule number 19 so i think 7 to 8 rules already completed in case you have got any question specific to the live please go ahead shoot it and feel free to ask me otherwise we'll wrap up the live and for generic questions we'll restart the live for 10 to 15 minutes you are okay there are few questions here let's see okay for instance the okay with le- with 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 least distance so what if we make 90 degrees but course made good is 090 it does not matter what your course made good is because course made good is a course which you are trying to counter the current with it does not matter aapka course over ground kuch bhi hone do aapki heading 90 degree honi chahiye theek hai na that's what it means because uske do nuksan hai if you are not making a 90 degree if you start following your course over ground the problem with course over ground is how you appear to other vessels first kijiye yahan se strong current hai ye le lijiye there is a strong current to counter it i will turn my vessel into the current okay so that it doesn't drift me down so in that case rather than and there are vessels which are coming down how am i going to appear to them i'm going to appear to them like this 
does that give them a very clear indication that i'm trying to join a lane or a cross a lane or whatever i'm trying to do but vis a vis if i'm heading like at a 90 degrees very clearly it shows that i'm trying to cut across so the whole idea is that if at all you are trying to cross you should make it very evident to any vessel which is going so if you are coming like this uh, if you are going to uh, cross a traffic separation scheme and there is a traffic which is not bound and if you show up in this direction imagine how confusing it is for the other vessel especially in night where you can only see the vessel by lights and you can only see so basically the idea is when you show up like this your your masthead light two masthead lights are broadly separated you can clearly see your starboard side light he for sure knows that you are trying to cross here you know so basically they are trying to keep the aspect visibly apparent to the other vessel when they say keep your heading to the 90 degrees so that your aspect makes it more than obvious that you are trying to cross that's what they mean so it does not matter which direction is the current and what is your course made good it can be anything you are supposed to still maintain the 90 degree heading reason being so that you stick to the minimum distance course and plus more important than that which i sorry forgot to mention is that your aspect your aspect makes it very very clear imagine up you are a southbound vessel and you see something like this you never know whether you are going to join or you are trying to cut across or whether you are trying to again you know he may be confused maybe that you are trying to join a lane but if you are showing up 90 degrees especially in the night time guys day time you can still see the aspect visually but in the night time imagine you, all you can see is the side light and two masthead lights so when you show up uh, like this on a 90 degree your masthead lights will be broadly separated clearly there will be distinctive presence of side light and which will immediately catch the attention looks like she is crossing that's the whole idea the moment you see this separated lights you know masthead lights with a side light you can immediately if you have sailed practically and if you have crossed a traffic separation scheme you know if you have crossed uh, singapore strait if you have crossed english channel you know people who are trying to cross and you know those who are at 90 degrees they appear visually different or oh, looks like she is going to cross so the whole idea is to immediately catch the attention and make it more than apparent to the vessel that this is the one to watch for because crossing uh, uh, traffic creates maximum chaos in a tss so that's answering your question uh, okay so geographical areas where tss is followed other than dover strait and strait of malacca captain sense bhai there are n number of areas jahan par traffic separation scheme aapko mil sakti hai aapko dover kela aapko english channel ke alawa if you go further up in the in the in the in the, in the north sea aapko wahan milega agar aap uh, if you are in the sco area then you will find you might find up there most of the ports on arrival and departures might have it to separate the scheme but singapore and uh, uh, you have uh, like one of the most famous areas is uh, cjk uh which is uh, you know the uh, entry gate to shanghai so most of the, you will see mostly traffic separation schemes close in and around busy ports but uh, singapore strait and uh, uh, english channel being one of the most busiest ones but i think even busier than them is the cjk agar aap shanghai gaye hain agar agar aap kisi bhi uh, kabhi bhi yangtze river mein gaye hain in china cjk is right on the outskirts so that's where you can find so what if ram vessel comes in way of cbd vessel as per rule time ram is exempted no again aapne rule aadha padha will cbd will take action cbd to anyways will keep clear agar aap rule ko galat bhi interpret kar rahe hain dost to bhi cbd clear rahega aapko kisne bola cbd ko ram se clear nahi hona tha what is rule number 18 says rule number 18 says cbd has to stay clear of ram of anyways aur यहां तो रैम को और एग्जामेशन दे दिया कि भाई अगर तुम ये कर रहे हो तो कुछ भी कर लो उल्टा चले जाओ सीधा चले जाओ कैसे भी कर लो सो सीबीडी तो एनी वेज इज सपोज टू स्टे क्लियर ऑफ अ रैम वेसल वेदर दैट रैम इज इंक्लूडेड विद इन द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस रूल्स और नॉट बट वी कैन से वॉट इफ द रैम इज ट्राइंग टू क्रॉस वेल इफ अ रैम इज ट्राइंग टू क्रॉस अड ऑफ यू एंड यूर अ सीबीडी देन द रूल डज नॉट से एनीथिंग pertaining to that a ram cannot cross what if the ram is trying to proceed to a port and she has to cross so she is doing it in compliance with the rules so in that case you have to fall back upon rule number 18 because it does not say anything specific to cbd and ram vessel engaged in a crossing situation in a crossing situation where cbd but yeah if the cbd is not complying with rule 10 sorry if the ram is not complying with rule 10 okay what if the ram is not a vessel which is engaged in maintenance of safety or which is engaged in laying servicing picking and if you see that ram coming in the opposite direction and you are a cbd then you have a right of way over that ram okay 
because she's coming in the opposite direction of the of the traffic in that condition you can say that you are right of way but if a ram so it depends on the situation in, in which situation you are interacting with the ram but if a ram trying to cross across port to starboard starboard to port she will still have the right of way if she is doing within the meaning of these rules she is bound for a port she is trying to cross the tss by keeping her heading to 90 degrees to the uh, general direction of traffic flow the ram will have a right of way over you but if you see a ram coming in the opposite direction of the traffic separation scheme and which does not which is not clearly employed in the safety of navigation or laying servicing uh, and picking of submarine cables in that case you will give him five shot in rapid that's the only time you will have a right of way over a ram but if you meet a ram else otherwise you are trying to overtake a ram if you are trying to uh, if a ram is trying to cross ahead of you within the meaning of these rules well a ram will still have a priority over you over rule number as per rule number 18 so remember guys 10 Rule number ten is always used in conjunction with the other two sections of rules inside of each other, as well as in case of restricted visibility. It is used in conjunction. You have to break down the rule. It's not as simple and straightforward, and that's why you need to clearly understand the definitions in uh, rule number three, and then progress further. So I hope I am able to answer your query. If I am wrong, you can please why watch in right? No, my watch is in the left hand. आपको मेरा मिरर इमेज दिख रहा है. I always I always wear my watch on the left hand. I'm habitual of wearing my watches on the left hand. If at all I'm wearing my analog watch, then I'll wear it in the right hand. Usually, now because of I'm so addicted to these smart watches, I cannot. So left is dedicated to this. But if at all I go to the office, I wear my analog watch. Then that goes in here because analog watches are still the real time pieces. This is shit. Okay, I think I have been able to answer that question rather easy. If you have got any other juggernaut, feel free to throw at me. otherwise we will pretty soon end up the live that means in next 2 to 3 minutes let me put my charger meri battery khatam ho gayi dosto okay if you have anything else for rule number 10 feel free to ask otherwise we'll wrap up the live kafi lamba bhi ho gaya 11:30 baje chalu ho raha tha accidental teacher okay there is a question term en route to means en route means you are bound from one destination to other destination there has to be two there has to be a port of departure and there has to be a port of arrival and when it says means you are on a voyage en route means you are on a voyage a voyage which has got specific instructions even if it means coming back to the same port but it en route means en route is a word which is very debatable so en route that doesn't mean ki aapne jahan chalaya ghuma phira ke wapas aa gaye wahi anchor kar diya bina kisi en route means you have been you are bound for a journey you are bound on an adventure as they call it okay shipping every voyage is known as adventure so you are bound on a proper voyage with proper instructions you know on a proper adventure even it can mean two different ports or it can be coming back to the same port aapka ek cruise ship hai which goes from singapore and comes back to singapore so us hisab se to kabhi en route hi nahi hoga it is en route but provided it is doing a proper journey a proper adventure you know ja raha hai ek journey kar but what it does not what what en route does en route basically means you are proceeding towards a particular destination with a particular intent okay en route that's what it means you should be moving you should have a intention to move एंड ऑल्सो डिपेंड्स कि आप एन रूट को कहाँ यूज कर रहे हैं मार्कपोल में एन रूट इज स्पेसिफिकली रिक्वायर्ड टू बी इन दिस वे दैट यू आर एन रूट फॉर अ पर्टिकुलर वॉइस फॉर अ पर्टिकुलर एडवेंचर विद प्रॉपर इंस्ट्रक्शन टू मूव इट डज नॉट मीन दैट आप एंकर पे उठे आपने गए अपना फाइव फिफ्टीन पीपीएम वाला माल डंप करा और वापस आ गए बोले मैं तो एन रूट था एन रूट डज नॉट जस्ट मीन्स दैट यू स्टार्ट मूविंग एन रूट मीन्स यू आर बाउंड फॉर अ वॉइस यू आर बाउंड फॉर अ एडवेंचर which is properly documented and that's when you can say you are en route for a voyage that's what en route means i hope i have answered that correctly if not then please correct me okay amit underscore c ka question tha en route to means i hope i am able to answer that rather i hope galat answer nahi kar <laughs> please thoda sa dekh lena but this is what en route means to me in my understanding it's a इट्स इट्स इट डिपेंड्स आप किस कंजंक्शन में यूज करें बट मार्कपोल में तो एन रूट आपको बहुत स्पेसिफिकली समझना पड़ेगा एस्पेक्ट मीन्स हाउ आई अपियर अभी जैसे मेरा एस्पेक्ट इज यू नो फ्रंट प्रोफाइल नाउ माय एस्पेक्ट हैज चेंज इट इज माय 
right profile. So this is what aspect means, how things appear to you. Okay, like this, this is aspect, you know, how things appear to you. So aapko jaj kaisa dikh raha, uska aspect kaisa, that's what it means. Yeh, aspect change ho raha, jaj ka. This is what aspect means. I hope I am able to answer your query. Moving on, aaj kuch jyada questions nahi aare. Akash ka question tha, aspect answer ho gaya. ओके वन क्वेश्चन सर साहिल का क्वेश्चन है वन क्वेश्चन सर और फिर वो गायब हो गया पता नहीं कौन सा क्वेश्चन था ओके ओके व्हाट हैपेंस व्हेन लाइटनिंग स्ट्रक्स ऑन अ शिप नथिंग हैपेंस अगर आपने फिजिक्स पढ़ी हुई है तो चार्ज ऑन द आउटसाइड ऑफ द स्फीयर विल नॉट इफेक्ट एनीथिंग व्हिच इज इनसाइड सो अब डिपेंड करता है लाइटिंग कैसे स्ट्राइक करी बट अगर आप बाहर नहीं खड़े हुए हैं तो वो बेसिकली सरफेस पे रह के अर्थ हो जाएगी वट डू यू मीन बाई सेफ पैसेज मैंने आपको बताया सेफ पैसेज मीन यू कैन ओनली मनूवर विद इन दैट एरिया इट इज टिपिकली अस लाइक एट गेव यू एन एग्जाम्पल इन सिंगापोर स्टेट इफ यू आर फॉलोइंग अ डीप वॉटर रूट दैट इज योर सेफ पैसेज दो यू मे नॉट बी अ सी बी टी बट और इन केस यू आर अ सर्टन कैटेगरी ऑफ अ वेसल से लाइक यू आर अ वेसल कैरिंग हजार कार्गो विच इज ओनली सपोज टू यूज अ पर्टिकुलर लेन Not allowed to mix with other lanes, so that becomes your safe passage. You cannot leave it. But more so, safe passage has to do with the not with your category of the vessel. It has to more to do with the with the with the with the limitation in terms of the space which is available to you. So if you are a power driven vessel, ten meters draft, and anything outside that particular channel or particular buoyed channel, there is not sufficient uh, depth available. Say like or less depth available, and you know that it's not safe for you at your speed to go outside. Then that becomes your safe passage. Whereas in you are a you, you are a power driven vessel with ten uh, meters draft, and the depth of the entire buoy channel is fifty meters, or the entire river is fifty meters deep. Just for an example, then there is no safe passage for you. The entire thing is a passage for you because you have a maneuver to you have the luxury to maneuver anywhere you want. so that's what safe passage means safe passage ka sabse acha example hai deep water routes in a, in 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 channels in 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 narrow channels in in tss areas in a, in fairways jo deep water routes and that if if you are obliged to follow a deep water route that becomes your safe passage so i hope i am able to answer you that uh rish i think i have uh, rish baduria ka question शायद मिस हो गया आप कैन यू जस्ट कॉपी पेस्ट इट अगेन बिकॉज आई डोंट नो हाउ हाउ फार बैक यू आस्क मी एंड इट्स गोइंग टू टेक मी लॉन्ग बिफोर आई स्क्रोल एंड कम बैक टू योर क्वेश्चन आप रिश दोबारा वो क्वेश्चन पूछ सकते हैं सर कैन वी क्रॉस सेफ्टी डेप्थ ऑफकोर्स आप सेफ्टी डेप्थ क्रॉस करने के लिए ही बनी होती है सेफ्टी डेप्थ इट डज न द एक्ट डजन स्टॉप यू फ्रॉम क्रॉसिंग द सेफ्टी डेप्थ इनफैक्ट safety depth will not even trigger your alarm so if if that's what you imply the safety contours that trigger the visual and audio or uh, the audio and visual alarm it's a safety depth is never going to trigger your alarm by the way so you are allowed to cross the safety depth it's not your grounding depth what you should not cross is your shallow contour that's where you will run aground okay safety depth is allowed to cross because you have already calculated it basis your present squat and all so you can cross your safety depth Not to impede. Not to impede means not to impede. What the word means? Not to impede means उसको नहीं आना चाहिए आपके रास्ते में. Impede मतलब अर्चन पैदा करना. I should not impede when you are speaking. I should not interrupt. Interrupt. Impede मतलब interrupt मतलब उसको वो स्पेसेज में नहीं. He should. He shall avoid impeding. Impeding means उस रास्ते में नहीं आना चाहिए. इम्पीड मतलब अगर आप रोड क्रॉस कर रहे हैं कोई चलता हुआ आदमी आपके सामने आ गया आप गाड़ी चला रहे हैं तो वो इम्पीड कर रहा है आपका पैसे दैट्स व्हाट इम्पीड मींस मतलब इम्पीड एंड विजर्व इट स्पेसिफिकली टू कॉलेक्स मींस कमिंग इन अवे इन 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 अ वे दैट इट हैज इट कैन रिजल्ट इन अ क्लोज क्वार्टर सिचुएशन और इट कैन डेवलप रिस्क ऑफ कोलिजन दैट्स वॉट इम्पीड मीन्स वेन वी टॉक अबाउट विजर्व इज विद रिगार्ड्स एंड ओनली विद रिगार्ड्स टू कॉलरेक्स वेन वी से इम्पीड मीन्स ही हैज कम इन योर वे इन इन सच अ वे दैट इट हैज रिजल्टेड in a close quarter situation which has developed the risk of collision so that's what impede means otherwise impede to ye bhi hai ki wo agar 10 km dur aa gaya 20 km dur pehle mere raste mein aa gaya so he is always impeding but when we say impede with regards to collision regulation it means that it has come in my way in such a way rather that it has resulted in a close quarter situation or in a risk of collision otherwise if he is crossing ahead of me 30 miles away from me there was never a risk of collision so that is not considered impeding Only when we say, but if we talk 
विद द रेफरेंस ऑफ इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज इम्पीडिंग मीन्स इंटरप्ट करना आपको आपके पैसेज को कहीं ना कहीं डिस्टर्ब करना उसको क्रॉस हाइड करना उसको उसके उसको इम्पीड इन इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज विद एनी थिंग विच इज यू नो परेप्स यू नो इंटरप्ट कर रहा है आपके पैसेज को बट दैट इंटरप्शन मे और मे नॉट बी कंसर्निंग बट वेन वी टॉक विजा विज फ्रॉम कॉलरेक्स वेल इम्पीडिंग मीन्स एनी थिंग विच इज इंटरफेयरिंग विद योर पैसेज विद द रिस्क ऑफ कोलिजन ओके I think that's it. No more questions. Action. If vessel is impeding my passage, depends which vessel is impeding which passage. Okay. Rush Budhiya question is sir on a crossing situation in TSS, slackening speed as per eight e is okay. But if on heavy traffic in TSS, do we need to slow down first, or we can directly use the ITZ and separation zone after informing BTS? No, my dear friend, there is no word. Please, I will request you. आप इसमें एटी का कोई मतलब ही नहीं आ रहा आपकी सिचुएशन में सर ऑन क्रॉसिंग सिचुएशन इन टीएसएस इट डिपेंड्स आप कौन किन दो जहाजों के बीच की बात कर रहे हैं दिस इज सच अ वेक क्वेश्चन एंड आईटीजी इन शोर ट्रैफिक जोन और सेपरेशन जोन ये वर्ड्स रूल टेन में है बट देर इज नो रिगार्ड टू बीटीएस इट जस्ट बिकॉज यू हैव इन्फॉर्म बीटीएस रूल टेन एज गॉट नथिंग टू डू विद बीटीएस रूल टेन डज नॉट प्रोवाइड यू दर्ड बीटीएस What speed you are going to approach and ensure traffic zone? It all depends on your type of vessel, maneuvering capability, stopping power, stopping distance, traffic, blah blah blah. So, no meaning in this situation. Me, what again? Like I said, crossing depends what two vessels are crossing. Rule 15 is not applicable in case the, both the vessels are not power-driven vessels. So, Bhaduriya ji, your question is so complicated that its answer cannot be made. So, crossing situation means which two power vessels are involved. If uh, two ram vessels are involved, then rule 15 is not applicable because rule 15 is specifically when two power driven vessels are involved in a crossing situation, not any vessel. So rule 15 जाके आप पहले मेरा live देखिए, उससे आपको पता लगेगा power uh, crossing situation with regards to these rules should involve two power driven vessels. And which two power driven vessels are involved? Are these two CBDs? So on and so forth. So ये बहुत complicated. आपको थोड़ा सा इसको स्पेसिफिक बनाना पड़ेगा दैट दीज टू वेसल्स आर इन्वॉल्व इन अ क्रॉसिंग सिचुएशन वन इज ट्राइंग टू क्रॉस बाउंड फॉर इंश्योर ट्रैफिक जोन देन वी कैन टॉक बट इफ इन जनरल समबडी इज ट्राइंग टू क्रॉस ट्राइंग टू जॉइन इंश्योर ट्रैफिक जोन बिकॉज ऑफ स्पेसिफिक बिजनेस दे आर अलाउड टू डू सो विद इन द मीनिंग ऑफ दीज रूल्स बट दैट डज नॉट मीन इट विल गिव यू द लेवरेज डिपेंडिंग ऑन विच टू वेसल्स आर इन्वॉल्व इन द क्रॉसिंग सिचुएशन सर आर वेसल इज पावर ड्रिवन एंड टीवी इज सीबीडी सॉरी वॉट इज टीवी भाई आपने टीवी किस चीज का शॉर्ट फॉर्म बनाया है बदुरिया जी सॉरी आई डेंट गेट योर क्वेश्चन सर इफ वी है शेलो पैच ऑन आर स्टाबोर्ड साइड एंड आर सीबीडी कमिंग अहेड वॉट विल बी आर बेस्ट एक्शन इफ आर ओ सी एग्जिस्ट रिस्क ऑफ सीबीडी सर इफ वी हैव अफ वी आर शेलो पैच ऑन द स्टाबोर्ड साइड एंड सीबीडी कमिंग अहेड वॉट विल बी आर बेस्ट एक्शन अब आपने मुझे ये नहीं बताया क्वेश्चन इनकम्प्लीट क्योंकि सीबीडी क्रॉस कैसे कर रहा है बिकॉज अगर सीबीडी क्रॉसिंग मी फ्रॉम माय स्टारबोर्ड साइड एंड देर इज अ शेलो पैच ऑन माय स्टारबोर्ड साइड आई कैन रिड्यूस स्पीड इन द ट्रैफिक सेपरेशन स्कीम रिमेंबर व्हाट द रूल्स से सेफ स्पीड सेफ स्पीड है क्या मेरी अगर मैं रुक नहीं सकता वॉट द सेफ स्पीड सेज आई शुड बी एबल टू स्टॉप विद इन द डिस्टेंस विच इज अप्रोप्रिएट टू द प्रिवेलिंग कंडीशन सो इफ आई एम प्रोसीडिंग एट अ स्पीड एंड विच आई कैन नॉट स्टॉप द वेसल एंड अलाउ दिस वेसल टू पास एम आई मनूविंग एट सो स्पीड नो so if i can if 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 vessel is crossing me from starboard to port she is a cbd i am a power driven vessel so it is a classic situation of basically crossing situation she is on my starboard side it's a crossing situation because both happen to be under the day pdb rule number 18 is also applicable cbd has a right of way over me so by all means i am supposed to stay clear of the cbd now there is a shallow pitch on the starboard side but who stops you from the, reducing the speed just reduce speed man let her pass ahead of you but problem is what if she is on the port side well again rule 18 she is a cbd she is crossing at i am supposed to stay clear she is crossing the tss but she is in a right to do that if she is crossing at 90 degree what am i supposed to do well in that case two options either i can go to starboard or i can reduce speed in a traffic separation scheme for all practical purpose i'll rather reduce my speed if i am not hunting down at crazy 15 20 knots and just allow her to pass ahead of me but if there is sufficient sea room 
there is no other traffic i don't mind but tss always you will see it's very difficult to alter course practically but within the meaning of the rules if there is no traffic if it is safe to do so then alteration of course is a uh, is a is a is a is a so if you are asking me from the point of view of exam if there is sufficient serum i'll still alter course to starboard and keep clear but in a real practical life i will reduce speed and just allow to pass because more often than not on in in in, in this area i'll have my engines ready for maneuver and I, and, and 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 assuming i have tracked the red at 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 a decent distance I, it, that this vessel is not just shown up oh right at then of course reducing reducing speed may not uh, result in avoiding avoiding the collision in that case the only option can be so depending if there is still sufficient time and i have observed her, i'll prefer reducing speed 90% of the times so i hope i am able to sir in countries whole in tss they require special navigation lights in different colors sometimes what is the significance well again ye jo different lights required in singapore mein required in singapore i think they require three green lights why they require three green lights again is something to do with what i just explained to you like you know when they tell you to cross at 90 degrees they are trying to make it evident they are trying to make it clear to everyone else that you, your intention is to cross or crossing mein sabse zyada basad hoti hai so when they give you these special lights the idea is that beyond any doubt irrespective agar aapko aspect bhi thoda confusing nazar aa raha hai because practically sometimes it's not possible to maintain nine, uh, the the heading of you know which is of 90 degrees to the general direction of traffic flow then in that case just by seeing those lights plus once you switch on those lights even before you start altering everybody knows who's ahead of you who's who has passed clear of you who's coming down on the opposite side lane they all know that your intention is to cross very soon and you are only going to use that light not the moment you enter but when you are about to cross so when you use these special signals you are trying to just again pre warn you are just trying to warn everyone that boss mai cross karne wala hu apna speed wagera thoda dekh le kyunki yahan se pata chala koi dhanadhan dhanadhan container se bahar aa gaya jana oh bilkul mere reel ke maafi ke nahi drift 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 to wo situation ko bachane ke liye ये सिग्नल्स दिए गए कि ताकि आप ये ना करें यू नो हेंथ ब्रेक वो ताकि वो आप उस सिचुएशन में ना आए सामने वाले को पता हो अदर पर्सन नोस दैट यू आर गोइंग टू कट अक्रॉस इट्स 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 स्टेटमेंट ऑन डिस्प्ले दैट बॉस आई एम गोइंग टू क्रॉस प्लीज बी अवेयर सो आई एम अबाउट टू गो यू नो पुल सो दिस गाय विल स्लो डाउन और दिस गाय विल इंक्रीज द स्पीड एंड ऑलरेडी पास वेल क्लियर ऑफ यू और बी रेडी टू टेक सम शॉर्ट ऑफ एन एक्शन डिपेंडिंग विद साइड ऑफ द Vessel, you are going to cut across. So that's what the idea of these special signals. But I have seen Singapore where they require you three green lights to be switched on prior crossing the TSS. But the, again, the idea is to specifically tell everyone that boss, I am going to cross. Please be aware. Okay, tell us something about seated L. Where seated <laughs> rule ten? Where seated L? Where is it coming from? Seated L has a lot of requirements. It's a very long topic. Seated L, brother. One hour to say it. सर आर स्पेशल मार्क्स एंड इमरजेंसी रैक मार्किंग बॉय मार्क डाउन चार्ट्स स्पेशल मार्क्स तो डेफिनेटली होंगे इमरजेंसी रैक मार्किंग बॉय का मतलब ये होता है कि इमरजेंसी में लगाया है सो इट मे टेक अप टाइम बिफोर इट शोज अप ऑन योर एक डिस्क और द वार्निंग कम्स दैट यू हैव टू प्लेस अ बॉय ओवर देयर यू नो विच यू माइट हैव टू मार्क मैनुअली अदरवाइज विद द विद इन द ऑन कोर्स ऑफ टाइम वंस द वार्निंग इज रिलीज इट माइट शो अप ऑन योर ऑन योर एक डिस्क सो फार आई हैव नेवर सीन on on an exdis display uh, an emergency rack marking boy but i've seen them visually why speed over water is used for collision avoidance because collision avoidance is all about aspect main tere ko dekh ke action dunga so rule of the road are very judgmental if you can say so aap jaise dikhte hain waisa hi action liya jata hai so if you appear if i see your green light it does not matter what is the current what is your course made good if i see Your green light, okay. First, की जी आप यहाँ cross कर रहे हैं. If 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 I see your green light with masthead light separated, that means I'll assume you're crossing power driven vessel. So rule of the road is all about aspect. When we say rule fourteen, you know, in line or linearly in line, we are again topic, we are again discussing aspect of the vessel. You know, so rules of the road are best based on the aspect, and the aspect is denoted by your heading and your speed over ground. Okay, so when you are when you are calculating, when you when you when you are using your course over water, you are called calculating your speed over water. Okay, so you cannot use speed over water and course over ground. Two different things are going to happen. Okay, na. 
अगर मान लीजिए फर्श की करंट पीछे से आपके और एक जहाज है जो आपके पीछे चल रहा है तो दोनों के लिए करंट तो बराबर हो गया ना दोनों को एक ही तरीके से इफेक्ट कर रहा है सो एंड प्लस लाइक आई सेट द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट इज दी एस्पेक्ट देर कैन बी लाइक इमेजिन देर इज अवर क्राफ्ट नाउ दीज ओवर क्राफ्ट दे टेक इमेंस अमाउंट ऑफ लीवे यू नो इन स्ट्रॉन्ग विंड और स्ट्रॉन्ग करंट ना फर्स्ट कीजिए वो चल तो ऐसे रहा है बट हेडिंग ऐसे मेंटेन करी हुई है हाउ विल यू टेक एन एक्शन इफ यू गो अबाउट विद इस कोर्स ऑफ कोर्स ओवर ग्राउंड सो इन दैट केस दैट इज वाई आई इन रूल्स ऑफ द रोड यू टेक एक्शन बेसिस हाउ द अदर पर्सन अपियर्स टू यू एवरी थिंग इफ यू से यू नो वेन दे से कमिंग अप एट अ डायरेक्शन मोर देन ट्वेंटी टू पॉइंट फाइव डिग्रीज अब ऑफ द बीम दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट यूर एस्टर्न लाइट सो एवरी थिंग इज हाउ द अदर वेसल अपियर्स दैट्स वाई स्पीड ओवर वाटर एंड स्पीड ओवर कोर्स ओवर कोर्स ओवर आई होप आई एम एबल टू आंसर यू एंड एक्सप्लेन यू चलो आई थिंक काफी क्वेश्चन हो गया आफ्टर टैंक क्लीनिंग माई टैंक रिमेन भाई ये टैंक क्लीनिंग वाला कहां से आ गया कैप्टन यू आर लुकिंग फनी इन दैट बैकग्राउंड हाँ भाई बैकग्राउंड तो रियली फनी है आज हाँ जिसने वो रील नहीं देखा ड्रिफ्ट 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 वाला जाके देख लो अच्छा रील बनाया तो चलो ऑन दो थॉट्स विल रेप अप द लाइफ आई थिंक प्रिटी मच ऑल द क्वेश्चन हैव बीन आंसर्ड and answered pretty much to the satisfaction if not then i'm really sorry agar aapka koi question miss ho gaya what it is easy what is easy turn ye samajh mein nahi aaya chaudhri mohan kya question hai bhai what is easy what is easy turn samajh mein nahi aaya question hi samajh mein nahi aaya question galat hai basically flaw in the question please correct the question ek question banaya karo thoda tasalli se puch ke likh liya karo agar samajh mein nahi aata jaldi kya question puchne ki प्लीज करेक्ट योर क्वेश्चन द क्वेश्चन मेक्स नो सेंस टू मी ओके विद दोस्ट थॉट्स विल रैप अप द लाइफ टुडे थैंक्स अलॉट फॉर ज्वाइनिंग जेनेरिक लाइफ के लिए 10 मिनट का लाइफ चालू होगा इस लाइफ को खत्म होने के बाद तो ज्वाइन करें इन केस यू गॉट वॉट इज न्यू इज गॉट सॉरी मैंने नया इज गॉट नहीं पढ़ा है आई एम रियली सॉरी और इज गॉट मैंने जिंदगी में नहीं पढ़ा है बिकॉज आई एम नॉट अ टैंकर हैंड मैंने सिर्फ एग्जाम के टाइम में इस गॉट देखा है वो भी सिर्फ उसका फुल फॉर्म पढ़ा था और थोड़ा बहुत खोल के देख लिया था चलो विद दोस्ट थॉट्स विल रैप ऑफ द लाइफ टुडे थैंक्स अलॉट फॉर ज्वाइनिंग इन बिग नंबर्स एंड सपोर्टिंग द लाइफ एज ऑलवेज एंड रियली अप्रिशिएट योर प्रेजेंस एंड ऑल द क्वेश्चंस विच यू हैव आस्ड दे इंटरव्यू मी एंड दे एक्साइट मी एज वेल एंड विद दोज थॉट्स विल रैप ऑफ द लाइफ फॉर एनीथिंग एल्स दे इज गोइंग टू बी अ जेनरिक लाइफ स्टार्टेड इमीडिएटली आफ्टर दिस लाइफ इज कंक्लूडेड सो ज्वाइन मी फॉर दैट एंड आई विल सी यू ऑन माई नेक्स्ट एंड to my special friend ship sailor sunil wishing you a very very happy birthday many more to come so sunil sir ka birthday apne bhai ko wish kar diya thanks a lot for joining the live see you on the next take care bye bye